All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to do an electronics repair here. We're going to be working on this Craftsman remote garage door opener. And the problem we're working on today is these things can get where they don't function when it's very cold outside. Um, right now, it's in the upper 40s, and it has failed to function. And what you'll often see if we zoom in here with this particular problem, you'll find that only half of the backlighting is coming on. So we can see it's lighting up red here and it's lighting up red here and it's not lighting up red here. But when it's warmer, the whole thing lights up. And so this is a good indication that we've got a problem with the circuit board. Now, if you, the first thing you want to check here, of course, is the battery. And you could just take a small flathead screwdriver, push this out. I use these Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries in here for two reasons. One, they're guaranteed by Energizer not to leak. And two, the performance in cold weather is superior to alkaline. But the first thing you can check, of course, is to make sure the battery's okay and to make sure that you've got good tight connections here. We don't have that problem on this one, so this is a circuit board problem. So we're going to go ahead and remove this from the house, and we're going to take it over to the bench and open it up. The bottom screw out of the way you should just be able to push it up and get it off the metal screw. Now we can take it up and open it up on the bench. All right, guys, so inside there's our circuit board. You can just kind of barely see it peeking out inside there. And this back piece on these models is glued on, right? So the first thing we're going to want to do is work that glue loose with a small flathead screwdriver. You want to get in a position where you can get a lot of control on this because you don't want to break anything. Right, so we're just going to be going a little bit at a time like you see me doing here and just trying to find the weak spots in the glue and working it loose all the way around. Just want to make sure you don't get it where it's going to slip and you want to make sure you can get good control of it so it's not going to go in too far. We're just going to kind of make a couple of passes just like this a few times so we can work this glue loose. I'll give you, give you guys a, well, so this is the weakest part right here, but it kind of gives you an idea. That's the level of depth of this cover. It's not very far at all. You don't want to just try and prise it off all at once, though, because it's good a chance that it'll break. And we don't want to break it because it, it's going to then be difficult to reseal and keep moisture out. So just keep going around just like you see me do here, and I'll come back when we get done with the circumference. All right, guys, just a progress update, right? Here's where we're at. This is about where you should be, going nice and slow. At this point, I'm just going to kind of wiggle it a little bit and then continue working here. This is the glue is just strongest in this particular one right up along the back. So again, we're just going to go slow and keep working it loose. All right, guys, right at the last little bit. Of All right, guys, what we're going to use to clean these contacts is Deoxit Gold G5. All I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a little bit of it on my table, actually. And then I'm just going to take a Q-tip, and we're going to clean up all these contacts on the board. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the keypad itself. All right, so this is probably not our problem, but while we're in here, we're going to go ahead and do it. All right, guys, if we put the board under the microscope, this is the contact point for the Enter button. We want to make sure all the gold traces are okay. You can use a magnifying glass as well. And then we want to check the gold traces on each of the numeric contact areas to make sure that there's no breaks or damage on any of those as well. So once you clean it, it's the best time to go check all of this. Make sure it's in good shape. So these all look good. Now if we flip the board around, we can see the edge where the battery connector is. And if we flip it over the other side, this is the solder point. So what we're going to also want to do is check for broken solder joints here. And then we want to check for broken solder joints all along the devices that are soldered on the board. So I've already kind of checked this. and I don't see anything obvious, but I'm still going to go over each one of these and touch it up with a soldering gun, or soldering iron rather. Same thing for the LEDs. Want to make sure that we touch up the solder points on each of those because of the fact that we've got something that only 
misbehaves at a certain temperature is really indicative of a, con a connection problem. Now, if it's not a solder joint problem, then it's happening internally to one of these devices. And we'd have to do more work to figure out which one is failing. So it's hopefully it's just going to be cleaning contacts and touching up all of these pins. Let me go do that, and then we'll give it a shot and see how it performs. So guys, all I'm doing is coming over here and I'm just touching on each pin. Not even really going to put any flux on here because we're just trying to reflow the solder on each pin. And we're just going to do that on all of these components. Just in case there's a solder break somewhere. All right, guys, so let's reassemble it now. Put our PCB gaskets in here. Set the board on top of them, like so. And then this whole assembly is then going to go inside where the keypad is. Going to move our battery piece in here so it doesn't get pinched off. All right. And then what we can do is before we glue it back together, we'll go ahead and give it a test. Now, before we can give it a test, we're going to have to let it sit outside probably for a couple of hours to let everything cool back down now that we've reflowed all the solder and we'll see if this fixed it. Alright guys, we brought it back in from outside and we're in good shape in the sense that you can see all the LEDs are correctly working now. And I've already tested it and even cold it's working so that was a good repair. It's not really sure which part of our repair ended up solving our problem here. Uh, it could have been either the cleaning of the contacts or the uh, resoldering or both. Let me get a tool here so we can pop this guy back out because what we're going to have to do now is re-glue him back on. Alright, so we're going to keep the keypad in there. So all we're going to do on this is we're going to use some super glue. And we can see the areas it had glue. It wasn't a continuous stream in the original factory hookup. And we don't need to make it any stronger than it originally was. We'll run the super glue around the perimeter the way it was originally and then we'll let it set up and then we'll reinstall it and we'll do a final test. It can be a good idea to put a hammer or some other kind of weight like you see me doing here just until the glue dries. Alright guys we've got it mounted. I'm just going to show you you know hitting the bottom button here obviously makes the door move which is better than what we had before. So good repair, worked fine. If you got questions, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to help. If you got comments about how we did this repair or you've got something similar, go ahead and leave that down below too. This should work for the Chamberlain type remotes as well because they were the OEM supplier to Craftsman uh, for Sears back in the day. And if you found this video useful, saved you some money and got yours working without having to replace it, go ahead and Hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.